Cloud9 and Astralis Moses, which, uh, I mean, Astralis are in the grand finals, so now it's just a question of, you know what, how much do they want to, you know, show, how much do they want to flex, you want to give anything back to Cloud9, that kind of a thing. What do you what do you think? What do you think? I mean, we're in Inferno as well, we haven't seen that yet. Yeah, which is going to be exciting, and they, they still, uh, they don't have that win streak going anymore, big stop them on this, but uh, it's still a very strong map for them. If I'm Astralis, I flex any chance I get, right? With all, like, the controversy around them, like, you know, missing events and everything like that, I'm yeah. just, like, I'm, I just come in and I just say, every single game I'm going to prove that I pretty much still stomp every single team that we go up against, except for maybe Ents. Very true. Ents are a fantastic team, aren't they, at the moment? Well, this is rushing down the middle. Golden, the one to pick up the kill. And Magus turning around to put a little bit of an end to it, although they are weirdly segmented now. The Estrada's team need to find a way to regroup, and Golden doing even more damage. He was great in the last game, and I think generally this tournament he's been playing really well. Astralis is just buying time at the moment for Dupree's position to alleviate the pressure. And I don't know if Rush is going to expect this whatsoever, not even close. How does he stop Dupree? Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer for that. You kind of have to swing fast, but you have no idea he's already there. Either way, this is, this is a bit ridiculous. And Golden is still aggressive, and this round has now turned very scrappy. Yeah, we've got ourselves a, a real fight here, don't we? Golden, he was, I mean, the pistol round that he had on Nuke when they were on the CT side was great. This is maybe even better. He's just everywhere with that USP, finding the kills, and could have maybe had a chance for a long, long range shot there. Cajun taking down Dupree, and now Sip all alone. Golden, yeah, he's going to find him. That's a quad kill. Every single one of them headshots. Great job on Golden. I like him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful round from him as well. I mean, great push down mid as well. This is the other thing that we, we didn't really get a chance to talk about before the action began is Cloud9, uh, yeah, you know, Astralis in the finals, but Cloud9, nothing to really play for except for, you know, points a little bit. This is kind of like a, a cornered animal type situation where I wouldn't be surprised if we see more plays like that throughout this half. If they pushed on mid two or three more times, but this is where they can get really creative and just say we're not really playing necessarily for anything. We can't play for any kind of standing in this at this event. We have no chance of getting into the grand final. So let's test some things out. Let's try some things that we've talked about and theorized in practice. What kind of an animal is Cloud9 in this metaphor of yours, Moses? Because I feel like if you corner like, uh, you know, again, hamster. a hamster. Uh, hamster, I was gonna say gerbil, but um, th then it's, you know. You love your gerbils. Yeah, something adorably useless about them. Just don't seem to serve any real purpose. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, corner a bear or something, I get it, I get it, but... Yeah. Yeah, a bear would be a scary animal. Is that what they are, Cloud9? Do you want to try and put... No, they're not really a bear at this point. Maybe like a baby bear, if anything. Baby bear. Like, not quite a fearsome bear. They're like a cute, cuddly teddy bear. All right. We'll see how it goes so far. It's looking decent enough. Losing a single player there, but it seems like they should be able to hold on to all of the rest of the guns. They could just model top them out of here, but they're going to go and do it manually, so to speak. And that will be the second round in favor of Cloud9. Third round coming up and see what Astralis can do. What if they're a goldfish? That's never really been a deadly animal. No, I doubt if many people have died to goldfish over the years, Moses. I just, uh, it seems unlikely. Maybe you try to eat one and it gets stuck in and your throat. you choke on it. It seems like really the only scenario I can think of. Instead of a goldfish killing you, maybe like it flops out of the fishbowl and you slip on it. How do you corner a goldfish as well? It's not, that's, not, that's not clear either. Square tank. Square tank. <laughs> Dupree's going to take a fight mid, and Device is going to hold for the banana push. That's golden down. He's been great in these past two rounds, and Device is going to have another chance, but he can't win it. Dink from automatic, and the flames finish him off, but... Man, Astralis just keeps sending bodies out of to take the fight. Three on three. Yeah, it seemed very, sort of very willing to just run in there and, and fight one at a time. It's always hard to know how a team is going to react to being in the position that Astralis is in. Um, I mean, we've seen in some past events where teams sort of do end up playing like a very loose sort of run and gun sort of style. Just wanting to do that. Two on two here. And... Two defenders on Cloud9. Spread out far across the map, but Vice is actually taking sort of taking some steps to relieve that. He's got to be careful, though. There's still 50 seconds, right? Like, Astralis can not only turn around and readjust, they, they can also be really patient and check their flank and be cognizant of that fact. So he's got himself in a pretty safe position, but he can't help rush. 
Rush is going to have to do everything if they come barreling out, and, and you can see what he's concerned about. And this is fine from Astralis, even though Cloud9 have a good idea of where they are. Oh, that's a big win for Vice, but the patience from Astralis makes Cloud9 a little bit nervous, because all of a sudden you say, oh, it's been 30 seconds. They can be in CT spawn. They can be heading towards the B-bomb site, and yeah, that's what happens. Well, Vice has run all the way back. <laughs> it couldn't have gone worse. I really don't think it could have. They could have choked on a goldfish in the middle. That would have been <laughs> worse. But I am, um, I'm actually, I'm a little bit shocked. Um, I felt like that kill on Sip in the middle was, that was going to be the winning moment. Now instead, Glaive, 100 health down here in the pit. Vice, smoke in a kit, but still, like, how do you even make any use of that right now? Certainly not clear to me. And he's just, he's slowly edging his way towards the bomb site. Glaive actually did not spot him in that peak, but still, I mean, time has run down solo right now. Gonna try and go for the smoke on top and tapping the bomb. He's pretty oh. much got one chance. He's inside. Two seconds on the defuse. How no. has he done that? Oh my god. That's so ridiculous. Out of all the ways that round could have ended. That's how a goldfish beats you. Yeah, just what? Slides right in there with the defuse. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that. Glaive checks every angle except for the one he's at. What? A weird finish. 10 HP. Glaive had so many timings where he could have seen him along that wall, right? And he just didn't peek deep enough. He probably thought that at that point that Vice was saving right up until the smoke blows. That is so strange. Not sure what to make of it, but um Cloud9 with three rounds. Right now, pretty standard setup for Astralis. You know, trying to get a little bit of banana control, holding on to apartments on the other side. We'll see what they do once they are comfortable that they have sort of m most of the control that they need right here. They, do, they have some some grenades, limited on flashbangs, but enough smokes to make it interesting. Golden got the information, didn't want to stick around for the fight, but he is going to call automatic over with the AWP. Question is, where does automatic go? If you stay in CT spawn, high likelihood you're going to get smoked off. Vice playing around the fountain as well. So if a smoke does come in, there's there's really nothing automatic can do to actually help. One flashbang, one counter flash to maybe slow things down. But Vice will have the hardest of tasks against him. Yeah, he really will. And even he doesn't have like a Molotov or anything to try and buy more time. So I'm worried about this kind of a defense too. It could definitely crumble quickly. You see if they get the timing down right, or if, if Automatic could take one with him, that would really be huge. If he could get run before they sort of get to the bomb side, and they gave him the chance right there. Smoke on top of his set a single counter Molotov. He's running through with the AWP. He picks up the kill on Magus. This is a very strong play coming out, and he couldn't get the third shot in. Vice, on the other hand, did go down, so still a three on three. In Ten seconds here. Yeah, I think he wanted to stop the bomb plant, but he got knocked out, didn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, Golden, he calls for a flash, but they do it right. The flash just doesn't hit Glaive whatsoever. Glaive with three kills, all of them so far in the round for Astralis and Cajun. Swings the corner, gets nothing done. Rush must save, and for Cloud9, they're going to be out of money after this. Vice has 3,000 in the bank. Rush will have this AUG, but can you really invest around those two weapons? Nice hit from Astralis. Even... I mean, even with automatic doing pretty much everything you possibly could, coming through that smoke with his flashbang, it's just, it's so difficult to slow that down from those positions. Yeah, it really, I mean, I, I don't know what would have had to have happened. I, I didn't see, you couldn't really see the round from Vice's point of view, but... I'm assuming he got caught off guard by Glaive, maybe jumping up on first orange boxes over the yeah. smoke. He was trying to, like, assist... Trying to assist uh, Automatic a little bit, not paying attention to when Glaive jumped up. So just a nice timing to find Glaive. I mean, that's some pretty effective baiting of your teammates in fair play. Ooh, he did get blind. Just didn't care, did he? Yeah, that sucks. Use some of those Jedi powers. <laughs> if you were a Jedi playing Counter-Strike mode, could, could you would you need to see anything? Could you just sort of sense what was going on? Uh, I think you'd be able to sense because they have that whole like uh, training visor. Yeah, but does it work for the computer as well? Yes, it does. I imagine it would. Oh. Just transferring that. I don't think he was actually shooting at that angle, but... Um, that was a very slow peek from Rush, wasn't it? So I think he actually saw it. And the, the crappy thing about that play from Rush, or from Cloud9, that's uh, that's one of the guns they had. Yeah. And there's no way to recover it. It was slow, wasn't it? Yeah. Tai Chi counter strikes. 
It's Tai Chi slow. Isn't it? Isn't that the I don't know. You're the one who said it. Did you, did you just not know what you're talking about? <laughs> Most of the time, no. <laughs> oh. He wanted to get away, and he wasn't allowed. Device able to take him down. Automatic and Cajun. I mean, oh, that's beautiful. I, I'm, I'm loving the shots even as they are getting crushed in, in the round. Yeah, and there's nothing to really do about it. So it's going to be two to three. Cloud9 with, uh, with investment that round as well. Bought up everything they possibly could. So they're going to be uh, sat back with no money one more time. Dupree should be able to get this kill onto Cajun. And yes. Oh. That was a painful chicken squeal cluck. Yeah, you could sense the pain. The last the last sort of slip away of the soul just escaping and making that noise. <laughs> maybe that maybe the soul of that chicken was going straight to hell and that was kind of the, <laughs> that was the thing. Maybe it's done awful things that we don't know about. Yeah, that's a that's an evil chicken. What is the worst thing a chicken could do? Uh, Ents, by the way, are up six years before we get to that moment. It is critical, but um, <laughs> but obviously if Ents win, then they get to go to the grand finals against Astralis. I would really like to see that. I would too. I think that'd be phenomenal. I would rematch the major finals as well. I mean, is it is it technically the chicken's fault if it carries diseases to other like other people? I think that would be high, that high on the list, you know. Yeah, but that's not evil. That's uh, I think that's closer to unfortunate. What if it knows? I wouldn't blame the chicken. If it knew, on the other hand, that'd be different. Like chicken pox, I think. Chicken pox are a thing. I don't know how they actually connect the chickens, though. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just assuming. Why would they call them chicken pox if they don't? Yeah, it's a good point. But I mean, I've had the chicken pox, and I never was anywhere near chickens when I was younger. That's your story. That's what you're going with. That's all I got. All right. Well, uh, I think if they knew, you could blame them for sure, and that would be a thing. Um, pick your eyes out. I think. Just sleeping, That'd sleeping, be on, sleeping on the lawn. Okay. Not much to do in the way of defense here. Nice, nice jumping shot with the Mac 10. Making Vega proud somewhere. Oh yeah, Vega's looking at that and just saying, we invented it and we're not getting any credit any of these days. So thank you to Anders for making sure you give him a callback. Got it a little bit. I mean, obviously you'd, you'd, you'd need like two or three. Mac and you 10. need to be rushing banana as well. Definitely need that. Yeah. So it's only like, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing, but not the full experience. S three to three right now, tied up, going into round number seven, and clearly Cloud9 slowing down a tiny bit. They haven't really had the money to to play. I mean, the the rounds. Remember, they had that miraculous diffuse in the smoke from Vice in the in the one versus one against Clave. Yeah, that and you was just, And you just haven't had you just haven't had money to really fight for it. So I mean, that's the round where they they kind of lost. And then the other two is just like we don't even really have anything that we can utilize to challenge Astralis. Even now, yeah, the weapon's good. The the nades are not. No kits as well. So desperate times for the Cloud Nine defense. Three towards B and nobody holding Arch. I don't know about this from Cloud9. I'm not a fan. I won't lie. This is an interesting stack. Especially should automatic most of the time has not even actually been in a position to do anything if somebody showed up. So it's like I, getting... I hope this works. The stack. There's so many ways in which the stack could fail. Flashbang, yeah. smoke, bottom player gets killed first. So three. Three ways this could fail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we found a fourth. Oh man, he, he took it right to the face. Didn't he? <laughs> I like it though. I like uh, I like the creative stack. Yeah, yeah. Now, but now we're left wanting, right? We don't know how it actually would have played out. Well, maybe they just keep running it until Astralis turns the corner without a smoke, which probably will never happen. Either way. Cloud9 have no idea what's coming. They've played such a passive defense this entire round that Astralis is more than happy to just kind of sit back and make just minimal presence and force the utility out of the defense, force them into a decision where one player automatic rotates towards the B-bomb set at the wrong moment, and then this crossfire has to do everything. Oh, no, that chicken's right in the crossfire, isn't it? it survives so far. The bomb, though, goes down, and so does Glaive and Magus. Looking good, but now Rush a little bit alone down here, and oh, he's actually going to pick up a kill. Thought he was going to go down before. They were everywhere. Five seconds on the clock, so no round here as long as they don't fight. And they're going to do it smartly. They get to win the round, Cloud9. And trying to see if they can make life hard on device. They will be able to do that. So, 
Great job. I'm surprised to see Astralis run the clock down that much when they had such control of the map for so very long. Maybe just lost track of things. That They took their time in kind of busting up the stack and the time they obviously don't really have at this point. 12 seconds left and yeah, it's just so much to clear out. The bomb also stuck is an awkward position to pick it up in to recover it. Four to three as Cloud9 uh, keep a narrow lead. Still money on the Astralis team. You know, oh, they're doing around. it again, Anders. Oh, they are. You're right. Love this. See if you can get out of it. As you said, probably will be a smoke there every single time, won't there? But sometimes people peek it. Yeah, you might just have one peek. Or it might be a pop flash. There's the pop flash. <laughs> that was... Oh, the, but the bait and switch. This is... is ooh, the bomb is miles away in middle. Yeah, but the trigger discipline. They don't know that automatic's here. I, I mean, hope, it, I hope they go and plan right. I, I wish we could hear the, the comms for, for Astralis. If they if they take over everything and the guy comes in like as a third player on the bomb side to plant the bomb and then he gets shot by automatic. Oh, he's going to be oh, so that's mad. That's exactly what's going to He's definitely going to be mad. What has happened? <laughs> oh, no. Now I want to hear the comms. I want to hear Zipnik's yelling in Danish. Yeah. Cajun's going to be the next one up and Glaive is concentrating on the bomb site. This has gone all the hell for Astralis. Just absolute confusion. They just assumed that the failed stack was all they had. And they have still a UMP on the bomb side. The free. Gonna lose the fight to Cajun. And I don't know. Somehow it looks like they're gonna win this round. Cloud9. 30 seconds and 21 health here on device. And no bomb plant. Device sneaking in. Molotov's gonna go way too far. Automatic gonna win the round there. 5-3. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> oh. What a weird way to win a round. I like it though. Oh, I, I definitely like it. You, are you alright? Are you gonna be fine? I almost fell off the chair. Never had that happen before. Yeah, I mean, that was what? That was option one for losing that stack, was the flashbang coming in. There's just one pop flash, and what sucks about it is if you're like the player. I mean, if you're the player on the bottom, I guess you have to have that kind of identified of saying, we're just going to stand and fight, you know? Because you can't just move if you're the bottom player and abandon the top guy. Well, I think that was like the comedic element of it, is the fact that they just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> just stood there blind, just hoping it was one of those flashes that wasn't designed for someone to peek with. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, to some extent that has to be true, right? They're either going to peek it or they're not going to peek it. It's sort of like a quantum mechanics approach to holding that corner, you know? When the flash goes away, we're either dead or we're not, Moses. Is that quantum mechanics? Schrodinger would be proud, yeah. Come on. It's 2019, Moses. You've got to learn the basic quantum mechanics. You have to. Yeah, I guess so. Golden, ready at the coffins, and with the orc, Probably will also be flashed in this position, but you can get some pretty good shots in even if they just try and run through. There's a flash bang if you had fired the gun down. That wouldn't work. That should have worked. Now boosting on the flower bed, and they're going to be there one second late. Golden dies, and then it all falls apart here. And then the big thing is because that, that boost comes in, Magisk obviously knows there's going to be a second player, or a third player, I should say, somewhere on that B bomb site. So heads up as he comes through the smoke. Nicely done from Astralis, a powerful B hit, and that's going to give them their fourth round here on the T side of Inferno. Cajun and Rush, no chance to even make a retake happen. And Cloud9's going to be really hurting for money again. That is their thing, isn't it? It was in the last map, too. The, um... Just don't really need the money, I guess. Just don't, don't believe in it. How are Ns doing at the moment? Ns are up 7-3 over Giants. And what about Nip? Because NIP is up 7 oh, 2 over wow. Navi. So this could be another really weird scenario coming in down the stretch. Well, I mean, if Ents win, I don't think it matters what NIP do. But if okay. Ents lose and NIP win, I think even if Ents draw, I think they still, as far as I could tell, I'm just not really an expert on this, you know. Ooh, could you imagine if Ents got wrecked by another tiebreaker? That would be. That would be something. It would be. But NIP has also had some misfortune with tiebreakers in the past. Yeah. I don't know. Part of me really wants to see Ents versus Astralis. Oh, yeah. I'd really like to see that. I think with the way Ents is, I think this this event is going to change the way I personally I think about Ents. Because I still had like the question of like, I just feel like I need to wait a little bit longer to see if they're going to keep it up from the Major. And this 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 event here in Madrid feels like it's kind of like solidifying the fact that they're, they're going to be competitors for a long time now. Yeah, 
but they are they are they're really like they're the real deal right yeah i really feel like that's true so um kind of on board with that for cloud nine the conversation is completely different still trying to get this roster to mesh and boy do they need it they have not had a stable roster in over a year yeah i mean i think that the thing that really the thing that makes that truly absurd is the fact that they won the major and then went into that. It was like, yeah, hard to explain. It was like two majors in a row as well. It was, well, it was Gambit winning the major, PGL, Krakow, yeah. and then busting up, and then Cloud9 winning Boston, and then breaking up. Yeah. Just confusing times for, uh, for fans of, you know, all different ages. And now we're just waiting for Rush to, to maybe... Are they going to kill on the pre? Timing is everything right here. But it looks like Astralis, well, they doesn't look like it. They are going to even it up at 5-5. Five, five. Can't really add a level of excitement to this, can we? No. They have won the round. Though, <laughs> they have already won the round. Not Crazy. even Vice could sneak his way in and defuse. <laughs> yeah. So, what does Cloud9 do from here? They'd obviously love to keep this AK, but there's, there's just no money. Even if they have the AK-47, you can't buy behind it. The brutal thing is that... Cloud9 just won two in a row just a while back, so they don't even have the loss bonus built up in their favor whatsoever. So Rush is certainly going to go down. It's just a matter of time. You'd think. Magus turns the corner. There's the final kill. 18 HP left on Magus. 5-5. Five, five. And everyone on Cloud9 sitting right around 2k. If you had to add animals to other maps, Moses. Okay. Chickens is sort of an inferno thing. What about like Vertigo or Nuke or something? What kind of? Well, Vertigo is a construction site in the city, right? Yeah. So maybe pigeons. Yeah, pigeons would work, but there are pigeons on train too, or there were at least the ones you could fly off the map. Oh, with. that's right. Yeah. You used to be able to like ride those, couldn't you, or something like that? Yeah, you could ride them off. It's amazing. Great concept. Should be a game mode built around that. What flying on pigeons? Yeah. I feel like that could, that could work. Give a new uh, meaning to the idea of wingman, surely. What about man bear pig? Those are oh, those huge, right? Like, you can't have like a horse, tr you know, trampling through the game while you're trying to play. Why not? Oh no, Glaive. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and Sim actually kills him. <laughs> Just took him out. He's like, you're going down, but I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. Yeah, Glade even like recognized it that he got caught on the lip on that yeah. little edge. Now, if you could, if you if you had horses and you could ride them in the battle, that would be different for me. That I would have. That would change the entire nature of the horse on a map. Yeah, I would like that. Okay, that's kind of weird. I don't know if I'd like that. Riding a horse in a battle. Uh, I mean. Also, I think you know this is going to sound maybe a bit callous. Mm. But if you put a horse in the map, like, you know, as you can kill the chickens, you know, I think it's a little bit more of an issue if you're killing horses. No, they're, they're, they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> they are one. Why are horses evil? Oh, yeah, you don't like horses. They tried to kill me once. That's I'm right. Just, I have a good reason. That's not evil. It's <laughs> doing everyone else a favor. <laughs> it's in their nature. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, they, they do get the kill and things you know, kind of still work out for Astralis just fine, but it definitely a funny moment. <laughs> it's getting run down. Like lemmings, little lemmings. Okay. Around the corner. Wouldn't you need to have a map? Maybe that would be good for Vertigo because there's that steep drop off. Maybe all the lemmings at the start of the round just run right for the edge. Yeah, it's true. Although that is actually a complete myth, but it's, but still. It's a funny myth, so we all It is it. funny, we keep it alive, it's yeah. fine. Somebody made a whole game around it. You ever played that game? No. <laughs> Why has nobody played lemmings? Why am I the only one who's done What's the premise of this game called Lemmings? You're sort of starting at a lower, but it's like a platform game, and then you have to build your way to like an exit, and you can like, you know, do like a pickaxe to dig your way through walls. You can build like, you know, sort of like stairwa stairs. No, it's, it's a very high level game. Okay. Would probably be in esports today if it was if, if it was still around. Yeah, I think we have different definitions of high level high level games. I'll show you one day. I'll show you a video. We'll find it. All right. I like that. Maybe we'll stream it. That would get a lot of views. Some gunfire exchange. This B bomb site, but Astralis again. The man advantage that device provides him. 
They're going to back off towards A. Cronauts actually played a lot of this half with, with three players over towards that B bomb site. They've really leaned automatic in that direction to not even always to establish banana control. Sometimes it's it's been to defend at the site. A little bit curious, but it's putting a lot of pressure on the defenders at the A bomb site. Especially if you're gonna have if you're gonna stack three players there and you're not really ever gonna be able to get your team an advantage, that's when things get really awkward. That's what as an A defender you're like, alright, what's the point of me always being uncomfortable? Hold on, Automatic has a single flashbang and there's about 18 seconds left. Yeah, he's gonna set it up right there, but they turned around still. Vice got the kill on Device, and he picks up another headshot taking down Megiskin. Again, nine seconds, they try to make the cross sip with eight health and... Yeah, oh no, that was a team flash on Automatic. He still picks it up and he's gonna get it. They could have wrecked the whole round. Who was that throwing that grenade? I'm that assuming was, Vice? That was Cajun. No, no, that was oh, Cajun. he's dead, yeah. Cajun. All right. Well, it blinded the Astralis player as well, didn't it? Dupree, who was supposed to be guarding Zidnex. It looked like he was a bit blind, because how wouldn't he have killed Automatic? I mean, that could, that, that may well be true, but I'm still going to say that's not good enough. Moses, if you team flash me and your HTSs, well, I also yeah, flash see, the other guys. He was blind. I'm not okay with that. Well, I you won the round, fine. so you'd be yelling anyways. Yeah. I definitely would. You're a sucky teammate. I don't want to play Lemmings with you. Yeah, I don't think you can play multiplayer anyway. Okay. Hold on, we'll find it. 6-6, <laughs> six, six. going into round number 13. And again, a bit of a three-man stack towards Top Banana. Yeah, just, I think, sort of quickly sticking around automatic and probably going to be leaving at some point. He's actually setting up for a flashbang, so maybe, yeah, it looks like he wants for them to go for a bit of a, a battle here. I think their plan, Top Banana, is just to fight for Banana every single round, no matter what scenario they're in. Just to continue to fight Golden up over the top. He goes down. Vice is blocked off by Molotov. He's got to fall away. So again, three players at B, and it's still a net loss for Cloud9, as it's been a couple times now. I feel like he's being very stingy with the with the flashbangs there, Automatic. He just threw... The, it, they were fighting for a long time at the bottom of Anana, and he, he set one up for them to push initially, but he could have thrown another one into the sky, right? Yeah. And then it could have, could have been even better. I'm con I, I don't know. I like the idea of fighting for Banana, I just I don't understand why they didn't keep doing it with the grenades. Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't explain that one. I almost feel like, it, kind of what I mentioned, it feels like they're trying to almost... Uh, feels like maybe they're trying to like practice it a little bit. I mean, it obviously is something that may, maybe they're not as comfortable with yet, but a, a game where you can't really gain anything if you're Cloud9, right? Yeah. You're, just, you're trying to test some things that you've been working on in practice, and obviously there's still going to be some, some things you have to work through. Rush all alone. No backup here in lane. He's got one. He transfers over to two. Cajun in the back of the bomb site. He's got nowhere to go. There's the first player he gets. Can't transfer down. It's two on two, though. So this is not the worst situation in the world. The bomb is just going to be planted in the last seconds. Yeah, and they've got them boxed in on the bomb site. Although, who knows if they realize. But, I mean, that's not necessarily the best position for a shot to be in. Would be worse if there was a Molotov in play, but... That isn't the case right now. And Vice, he's been trying to keep an eye and certainly keeping an ear on the bomb side. He's going to crouch his way in. Glaive. Oh, how does he live? The first bullet did damage, but the rest seem to outline him. And now it's great because, yeah, they thought they checked the corner. I, I don't know. That was that was unfortunate. I think Vice, like nine times out of ten, he, has, he finishes that kill. Yeah. And then... I mean, even so, device still being there, just ready to go, might have been, might have put a stop to it anyways. I mean, that's yeah. a pretty nice setup. It's so difficult to always read when there is an actual, you know, two players in the same spot. As long as that first player is the aggressive one and makes sure he dies, so hard to read that there's going to be a second player following up. There you have your scores. Ents must win that game against Giants. And how crazy would it be if Giants played spoiler? And if Giants able to upset Ents the way they upset NIP, prevent them from making it into the finals. I mean, again, I just think it's crazy at all that Giants are looking, you know, competitive and are looking like they uh, they can really do. I think that that's really cool. Um, they, they, I think I can think of a ton of scenarios in which even just qualifying for it and sort of being able to play it would, would be add a level of pressure that, you know, takes a while to get used to. So um, I'm kind of excited that they are um, that they're doing what they're doing. Fox is back. Yeah, that in itself is madness, isn't it? Like, think of who else on that team... Muterus and, and Mutt, really, and um, 
and Armin. I'm not even really familiar with all those those guys. They've been playing, they've been playing since 1.6, I think. Really? Three of them, yeah. All it's right. crazy. Why not? Uh, Golden gets a grenade, then Glaive with a kill on Vice. So good way, to, good way to start. Good way to set up. Double entry into the bomb site. Now it's all just a question of looking for a couple of remaining kills. Automatic. Steal away one of them. Device not not really ready for it. So an eighth round. And the next one coming up. Last of the half. I don't know. Seems like Astralis are in a comfortable place right now. Yeah, I mean they've just been basically they've been steamrolling this whole this whole time. Really. I mean Cloud9, if they don't get the pistol, they're getting they're getting body bagged in this half. Even still, it's it's been a tough. They've been like reset a couple times, which is which is almost weird saying with these economic changes that we've had. They're not really new anymore, just the way the economy works at this point. But still, to be to be reset the way Cloud9 has twice in this half is you don't see it too often recently, and it really makes it tough to fight on a consistent basis. Here we go. Three players for C9 over towards A. That's new. Automatic. Left side mid and. Rush playing aggressive at Patio or Porch again, or Diggity. A lot of names. I thought Diggity was more or less everywhere on the map. <laughs> it is a funny graphic, isn't it? I think it was a good, good meme. It was a good meme. meme. I feel like Australians could be master of the memes if they really wanted to be. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got the right kind of uh, right kind of feel for it. Can I have? We had any good? Chad memes? Could we make some up? Probably could. Automatic recognizes the pressure and he's going to start backing away. Rush wants to stay aggressive though, so posturing, try to keep Astralis at bay as long as possible. Running out of utility though, again, is this Cloud9 team. Not a lot of smokes, not a lot of Molotovs, no kits. They have flashbangs to go for peaks, but you can't really delay anything. Astralis is just going to fall back. They've read this perfectly. Well, when I say perfectly, it not entirely, because Glaive doesn't check the corner, but he gets a kill anyways. Just one player, Vice, stranded inside of this B bomb site, but actually Astralis again is just hitting the pause button, luring him into this rotation, and now they've opened up A. That was... That's a masterclass yeah. from Astralis. That's actually disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, they are living inside of Cloud9's brain. They... They went for a... for a retreat from middle to go to B when Vice was alone. And then they go, they go back again anyway and catch the two kills from Cloud9 who are trying to sort of make their way across the map and then back to A. Just a really good job. 9-6 uh, at the end of it in favor of Astralis. I think that's, yeah, that's kind of saying something. Although Cloud9, I mean, they had, they had their moments suddenly. They just sort of ran out of money at some point. Yeah, which is, uh, yeah, you don't see that too often. I, I think it was just interesting watching them try and defend that B bomb site with three players. I think that was kind of unique seeing how frequently it was coming out. Yeah. Um, that little stack they had, I quite liked that, mostly because it gave us funny moments when it when it failed. That was good. And you could kind of see the failure in that setup coming, couldn't you? Yeah, Like, it that's was. designed for someone, like, dry peeking in towards CT spawn. It's not really designed to stop some kind of an execute or some kind of a, you know, utility play. Yeah, so we, I think we sort of outlined it. There was, like, you know, th three or four different ways it could fail, and maybe one it could work. So you never want to go for, like, the 20% The 20%, <laughs> you know, the 20 like, play? It's like, you know, just... Pray that it's one of those times. Yeah, and we saw, we, we they ran it twice, and the first time a smoke hit him and nullified it, and the second time a flashbang blinded him and got him killed. It's the fact that the smoke hit him, and it did like a thump sound, you know, like, thump. just <laughs> right in his face. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, I think Astralis are playing a, a fairly loose game at the moment. They don't yeah. think they're putting, like, a, you know, a ton of effort into uh, to, to making this work. Um, but, um, but such is how good they are on Inferno that it's still working. It is still working, right? Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, Inferno is kind of a map where, like, I almost feel like if Cloud9, if they were going to be in a position where they had to play, you know, loose Counter Strike, it'd be more fun for them if they had, if they could play them on Dust Two or something. Like Inferno is just such a limited map for the, for that kind of thing, especially CT side, right? Yeah, it's one of those maps where the utility can just beat you straight up. Yeah, like you can just you can just get destroyed by by nades. So I mean, they tried to fight for Banana, right? That's maybe the one place where they could really do something, right? Yeah, or, I mean, the mid-push that we saw in the pistol round that worked out so very well didn't really work a couple times they ran it. I mean, it's crazy to think if it wasn't for this round, it's fun I could have just been absolutely battered. What a win for Vice. That was 
So. Oh yeah, the automatic round as well. They had like the heroic defuse from Vice with 10 HP, and then they had automatic fighting after that stack failed, fighting with the UMP and never being checked or cleared out. Yeah, a lot of good moments in uh, in this game, in spite of everything. So um, nice to see that. Oh, I forgot there were fish on this map too. Goldfish. Are they? I don't know. Well, you said it very confidently. I'm just, you know. I think I think I, I feel like I've seen the color of the fish being orange, but I don't actually know what fish they are. I don't know if anyone's ever verified the species of the fake fish on the map. Nope. So there's a, you know somebody get a zoologist or something involved, and maybe we can we start to to get on that. Maybe they're not even based on real fish. Maybe somebody made up their own. I don't know. Do you have you have you ever had goldfish? Yeah, I have. Actually, really. Yeah. Oh, you've told this before. I remember. <laughs> yeah. That's the story has. I have. You're ending. walking me right into a very awkward story. Hey. I don't know if I appreciate that. No, we'll wait. We'll <laughs> another time. I saw that uh, Joe Joe Miller was tweeting about wanting an aquarium. Apparently. Okay. I I had a roommate in college who had a, a pet octopus. That was always fun. That's cool. But I think octopus are already. I I do think octopus are sort of aliens. I think we should, they are a bit. They're we should, a bit should, weird. We, I don't think we should eat them. I think we should uh, be nice to them. Yeah, try you to think stats. they're going to take over the world? Do you want to make sure that they like you when they eventually? Yeah, I just, I, I just, I did, it makes me nervous. I just think they are. I think they're smart. I think we should try and communicate with them instead. You know, build an app or something that can like translate. Somebody did that. Somebody once wrote a book to try and translate octopus language. How'd it go? I don't know. I haven't read it. Okay. Um, so you haven't learned the octopus language. So my list. Octopi language, I guess it would be. It pretty would be, yeah. I'll get on it, Mosa. I'll try and do my best. Okay. Second half coming up now. Cloud9 going to be on the T side and Astralis on the CT side. They have two HE grenades on that defensive side. I could definitely do a lot of damage. Actually, there's four grenades in total. HE grenades. Could definitely do some damage. Definitely could. Well, Sibis got one of them for the first corner. They're all right on top of each Oh, no. This could definitely be bad. Oh, they gonna I... run? oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was grenade was grenade, wasn't it? Yeah, the Cloud9's gonna end up on the losing end of this because there's still two players here. They're stalled out, they've slowed down, and actually now the Glocks, they've gotten close up. Glaive and Device could not find the fights they needed to keep them at bay. Yeah, you don't see that too often. The that... dueling dueling grenades. Uh, they were momentarily they were playing worms instead, weren't they? <laughs> Just... Or like one of the HE maps. Yeah, one of the HE, HE tennis. Maps. It's a good time, really good time. Dupree, again, if they peek him, he has a chance. But if they just sort of keep, you know, playing hide and seek, that is not going to work out very well in his favor. And I think he sort of realized that as well. Bomb did have a lot of time on it, but I don't know how you're supposed to try and find three people with no kit either. What a weird way to, to start it. I don't think I've seen that very often. It's just funny because... His grenade could have been so perfect, and then he got double-nated in return. Just, yeah, he gets, like, there's a grenade collision with him. That means he can't even really, like, sort of get stuck inside of it. Where's the second Astralis grenade? Did it go towards, like, the car? So it was yeah. just too deep, so it didn't do enough damage? I think that might have been it. Have you ever played, um, while well, we're on the subject of fun Counter-Strike maps, have you ever played Oplitsky? Uh, doesn't ring a bell. I probably have, but... Okay. That's a fun map. We should play it sometime. All right. Better right. than Lemmings. Well, I mean, probably. probably. <laughs> Golden going to lead the way with Rush up mid. There's more nades and more choke points. Dupree's been spotted out. But, I, I mean, the beautiful thing, we, we talk about it so much, but the utility usage, especially in these second rounds from Astralis on their CT side, so much pressure applied in... Holding onto the smokes as long as possible. Such, such good theory crafting from Astralis to know when exactly they want to drop each one of their smokes and how they're going to rotate players off it. For instance, Device drops his smoke at the wrap side, switches places with the pre to go use his smoke. But this is actually pretty decent pressure being applied from Cloud9 because they're doing it early enough that those smokes are being used, right? They're not being so patient that, that Astralis can just stall them out in the late round. It's very painful if you... If you sort of think you've waited all of it out. I mean, Sip has a smoke here, but it looks like, yeah, he's going to put it up right then and there. I mean, but even it, still, that's going to be 30 seconds, right? Yeah, yeah, so it makes a difference, right? But if it was already 30 seconds on the clock, that's when people, I think, start to make a lot of mistakes. Here's the tough part. Automatic 8 HP. He's tagged up. Golden is not sitting well. How has he gotten here? I don't 
You know, he's just oh. running his way past, doesn't he? Yeah, 8 HP doesn't matter if you're going to just shoot someone in the back, but 25 seconds left, he's got to make a play, but that HP is making him nervous. He's waiting for the rest of his teammates to take the attention. Actually, no, they're going to circle back to A. Wait, so Magus Automatic's going to be there to cut him off. Yeah, but Magus doesn't smoke in an HE, so let's just see how this works Ooh. out. Max 7, close range, smoke behind. He does a bit more damage. There's the grenade to take down Rush. Following it up, 10 seconds. Magus gone the other side of the smoke, and have they actually found a way to do this? There's a bomb down with four seconds. He can't oh, do it. No. He can't win the round. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, God bless it all. It's so awkward. Sounded even for a minute, Moses, like the chicken was laughing at the end, didn't it? You <laughs> yeah. could tell, like, look clockling away. That's just... the evil one. Yeah, it is definitely the yeah, evil one. Send him to hell. Off he goes. <laughs> Holy hell. How do they always find a way to make this work? And that's like, I feel like if they had just hit the B bomb site, they probably would have won with Automatic in that position, right? Yes. But for whatever reason, they make uh, the exact wrong decision. It had to be because Automatic is not confident with 8 HP. You know, if he turns, and that's that's kind of fair. I mean, we can obviously see the setup, but Automatic's probably thinking in his head, you know, if I turn this corner and try and backstab and someone's at triple box, it's like, I'm just dead. Yeah. Well, that was an absolute tragedy, wasn't it? No other way to put it. They... They thought so hard about it that they mind game themselves at the end of it. Which is obviously unfortunate. 10 to 7. Three round gap here, but that was definitely uh, an upsetting way to lose a round there for Cloud9. Vice, though, going to be picking off Sip and Glaive with one good return. He's alone on the bomb site. The bomb is kind of making its way there. If they can take him down, that should be round one, I expect. Ooh, good opening from Automatic. And yeah, that is going to be it. Bomb is going to get into the site. No one from Astralis rotating over, so Cloud9 uh, respond after fumbling the previous round. And the poor goldfish, or whatever kind of fish they are, are going to blow up. I feel like we need to... See, they're, they're orange. That'd be a goldfish. I realize that sounds kind of weird. I was going to say, you, be can, gold. you can see the flaw in your argument already. Yeah. So, um... But, I mean, that's I think that's a flaw in just the general name of the fish. Wait, this is goldfish on golden? They're like, they're like an orange, like a glittering orange, aren't they? Pretty sure. I don't know, you've cast, uh, maybe there are different species of them as well. I don't okay. know. Okay, that's fair. I do think they are there to blow up the missiles. It's unlikely that, um, that it's the fish that are really the main target, but. True. Uh, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, it, you know, they're definitely gonna be gone. You could go fishing with explosives, can't you? Um, so maybe there's something to it. Uh, you like fishing with dynamite? You're talking about like the saying? Yeah. I guess you could. You've never done it? I've never, I've never gone fishing with dynamite. Um, you can go ice fishing. It has nothing to do with explosives or goldfish, really, but it's a kind of fishing. My roommate also had a, uh, I think it's called a lionfish, like the really poisonous ones that can like sting you. Oh, why? Uh, they're they're really cool looking. But, I mean, you know, when you're in college and you get a little bit drunk and you stick your hand in the tank is a funny thing, he kind of yells at you. But I feel like he was just protecting me in that certain scenario. What a nice guy. Yeah. You would have just let me get stung. Oh. Oh, no. Well, he gave it all at the end. He really... He really meant... meant it. I don't know. I, I would... Oh! That's that's a nice, nice reaction from Dupree. I really like that. Maybe he's down in the pit. He sort of ruined the round for them the last time around. He's got a FAMAS and is immediately Molotov out of that position to take down Automatic and nice shot from Golden. Two on two for the retake, although device is coming in at an odd angle that I, I don't know. It's not that they wouldn't expect this angle, it's just I don't think they would expect it so soon. It's, it's really early on in the retake. Yeah, they can see they're not even looking for it. UMP long range though. It's a little bit awkward. Cajun now going to win the fight instead. Oh my god, that's... Yeah, anything else, right? But it's always Zipnix, and here's the CZ out for the range. He's got him over the smoke. Now into the bomb site, gearing over the top, and a great headshot from Zipnix. He wins it anyways, and plenty of time even without the kit. Astralis just snatching another one away from the clutches of Cloud9. Yeah, what a what a strange end. I thought maybe, I mean, Device felt like he, even with the UMP, probably could have had that kill, but just a little bit of a hiccup. I wonder, though, if, if you had stuck your hand in the tank and and the fish had stung you uh, and you would have you know, like died from it, would that have been like a lawsuit? You know, could he have, like, you know, could Probably, that have... I, I feel... he, like, he might be liable in some sense. Maybe that's why he didn't want you to do it. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
I, we, I didn't never I used to think of those in those terms. I do now, as an older gentleman. Yeah. But back then, you don't think about lawsuits, do you? No, hopefully not. I don't know. What, what were you doing in college? You went to they have a law school? Then maybe. You'd be <laughs> if I was, I think I'd be here if I was in college for law school, Anders. Yeah. Who wants to be a <laughs> lawyer if you can, you could do this. It's obviously more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, eleven to eight. Astralis, I mean, this, Conrad's actually putting up a decent fight, all things considered. This has been a very back and forth start to this second half, so I think a lot for Cloud9 depends on if they can continue this up, because obviously for the T side, when you're trading these rods back and forth, it should be a bit of an easier time for you, since Whoa. things are less expensive. But they need to come out on top of it. If Astralis come out on top of this tug of war, that'll just catapult them too far into the lead. Yeah, right on the edge for the T side now. Got to be very careful that they don't lose all the economy. That's, that's just so close, isn't it? Bit of a fight happening over there, and Dupree there for the instant follow-up. So right now, especially with the grenade damage and the spam for the smoke, it seems to be really working out for the Danes at the moment. Device going to hold lane, and he does not want to back away from this fight. He's got teammates here, so there's no reason for him necessarily to, to, to be too scared of it. you still got three teammates at A, so if he goes down, plenty of people there to recover. Astralis has completely rotated off of this B-bomb site. Good find from Device, and he's also cleared top mid. That means Glaive needs to get back, but even if he's not there in time, Astralis is going to be fine with a four-on-two -two advantage and a retake of this B-bomb site. Vice not going to be excited no matter what situation he's in with that MAC-10. And a late boost. This could just end the round. Immediately there goes... Vice and it's one on four. Cajun not even going to get the plant down. Yep, he was there just in time. So, but I mean, yeah, just even outside of the bomb site, four versus two, they should be able to retake that. No problem. 12 to eight. No bomb plant means also a little bit less cash, obviously, for Cloud9. That's a shame because. They do need it. Well, that's the kind of nightmare that I was talking Maybe not nightmare, but that's that's the situation I'm talking about where they've, they've now lost the tuck of war, right? Astralis just wins two rounds in a row. They don't get the plant. So you can't really invest. You have a Deagle on automatic, P250, not a lot of utility, and, and this just gives Astralis the breathing room they need. They'll build up money behind this, and they're going to start getting emboldened, and they'll start pushing down mid and applying more and more pressure. Automatic, great shot. Ooh, oh, a follow-up as well. Woo. Is that a deagle or a railgun? Outrageous. Taking down to Omegas, going to be dropped automatic <laughs> and a rampage Go through the it. map. I think you just push for it. Go get all five. Yeah. Show him who's really the boss here. Yeah, make him call you daddy. <laughs> that's, that's what you want. That, I mean, first kill, fair play. How do, how do you get the second kill? The recoil doesn't even reset that fast, does it? Not for me. No. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy. That's a ninth round for Cloud9 and kind of out of nowhere. Like, it seemed like they had no business. It, it keeps them. It keeps them in the in contention as well, which yeah. is which is pretty cool. It keeps them down the stretch, able to actually fight for this game and actually maybe able, even able to steal it away. Vice runs out of bullets and Glaive's able to finish him off, but Vice did have the jump on him at least for a moment. Twelve to nine. So this shot just immediately afterwards. That's that's pretty crazy. We've been talking a lot about automatic for good reason. Yeah, he's he's great, isn't he? I mean, it's it's funny to look back in in retrospect on, you know, obviously the player he is now, but even when they when Cloud9 wins the major, he was he was playing very very well. And I think the only thing that's overshadowed him was, you know, obviously Skadoodle had that phenomenal performance in the grand finals. You had Stewie and Tarek, who were always big conversation points as well. And and Tim does his work, and he's always very quiet about it, isn't he? He's not exactly yeah. like the the loud brand player. He just gets gets things done. I cannot believe Zipnix has dodged all of those bullets. Yeah, somehow still alive. But it does put them in a weird position. 2 on B, 2 on A against a potential execute with maybe all four or five players here in on it. Smoke to... Oh, and he gets Vice on the other side for Sip. That's huge. Now, he can sort of see that there's nobody else on Banana. That means they can definitely rotate Device in towards Arch. It's really, really 
That is a critical kill. That means they're at least playing three versus four over here instead of what it could have been. Dupree waiting inside automatic. Just fighting anyway, just pushing through the smoke. He just doesn't care right now. He's at that point in the event where he's just like, I'm going to come through the smoke while you're reloading. Great shot from Dupree, immediately on automatic. Going to smoke himself off, give him some safety from behind. He's going to follow things up, and he switches over to the pistol, but I think Magisk is going to finish it up for him. 13 to 9, Astralis recover. And I have indeed been told that fishing with explosives is illegal. But it was some random guy from Twitter, so I don't know if we can really believe him. We should send you out with some dynamite. I mean, realistically, who's going to stop you? So you have dynamite, so, <laughs> hey. I'm just saying. I'm now being told that is it is legal in some countries. Don't know which ones, but they sound fun. Yeah. yeah. That'd be worth knowing, you know, just in case you get the urge to move. Yeah, or just go, you know, just you happen, to be, you happen to be there anyway. You don't like fish, though, except on your pizza, which is very strange. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I should get into it. I feel like I'm missing out on the whole on the whole seafood, you know, You should experience. stop. I mean, first things first. You should stop eating tuna on pizza. That's the first step. That's the best part. Like, everyone has that conversation about pineapple. That argument is, is nothing compared to tuna. Like, you should just not be putting tuna on pizza. Moses, let's not forget that I converted your girlfriend into tuna <laughs> on pizza, so... You know. Yeah, but listen, you think <laughs> I'm just saying. You think I let that into my apartment? <laughs> what, you make her eat it out in the stairwell? <laughs> I'm just you know, that's that's just cruel. That's just cruel. Nice Molotovs, but they don't actually force anyone out. That's an even better Molotov, and now the spray oh, through. No. Oh my god. They got absolutely shut down. I mean there was three people defending here anyway, so that was always gonna be very tricky. Another round for Astralis fourteen to nine. But yeah, I want to. I'm gonna get into to the seafood. I'll try. Okay. I'll be adventurous. You should be. I can't even have you any know, culture at all anyway. Now they do a uh, tuna on salad here in Madrid. It's like a. I've seen it at pretty much every restaurant we've gone to. I'd be okay. I could, I'd, I'd, I'd do you do that? Yeah. I've had tuna steak before. We have like a whole one. You'd like swordfish, I think. Yeah. Swordfish would be an easy one for you to get involved in. Are they one of the ones like tuna that has like a lot of heavy metals? Are you just trying to load me up on? No, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being legit. All right. Well, give it a try. We'll I come. don't try and kill you like the way that you do with me. Well, can't trust that now, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Device having a good enough time over at the library. Not doing any reading, really. But, um, you know, just getting something out of it. 15 to 9 and just one around away. Astralis, I mean, just... I feel like this has been a, a smooth game for them. I, I don't feel like they've been put under a lot of pressure. No, they, they really haven't. They haven't had a they haven't had a whole lot to contend with. I mean, there was a little bit of a back and forth. The first half was probably closer than I expected it to be. But I mean, once the gun rounds have have come in, remember as well, Cloud9 has won both pistols. Like if you look at the quality of the rounds that Cloud9 has won, it, the, the score like almost feels like it shouldn't be this close. The, the 10 HP diffuse in the smoke, the automatic. Trigger Discipline and the B-Bomb site. They've won some gimmicky rounds. Other than that, it's been all Astralis. Oh, I wanted that shot to connect. That would have just been beautiful, wouldn't it? Oh, he gets run down and automatic with two headshots, or at least I think one of them maybe even through a wall there on Sip. And Rush goes down. Control a banana for Cloud9, but they don't have the bomb anymore. Oh, that smoke. Oh, no. If it goes away and Magus is looking at him, that's going to get really awkward. Now that they've sort of traded places... Shorty Vice won't check behind him either, and they lose one. Oh dear. It's very odd. Well, I mean, Magic has no idea where Vice is, but that sound cue, the kill gives it up, and oh, just the timing is missed. Now Vice has he, he, would he, yeah, I guess he does guess it. Walking in, checking it. How long is he confident that he's actually following somebody and that? Well, now the question becomes, did he go back, <laughs> did he go back to the bomb site or is he in all mid? It's the problem is just Magisk is never going to think about checking behind him, tapping oh, away, no. missing the shot. There it is, and the sigh of relief as well. He only had eight HP. Another quarter second, and Magisk probably pulls that trigger. That's exciting. He was doing a good job following him. Yeah. 
Ha like a sort of like a bloodhound. You know, uh, Potter was telling me the other day that she has a nose like a bloodhound. Apparently, she has like this, like a super, she, super superpower of hers. Yeah, her superpower would be the the power of super smell. Yeah. That's uh, I I don't know I I didn't never thought about that. I don't know if that would be my superpower of choice, but yeah, it wouldn't be the one you choose, right? But I don't think you know you know what I always thought got really done dirty by superpowers. Do you ever like watch the old school X Men? Um, with Jubilee. No. So it's this character from the cartoon who gets to shoot like fireworks out of her hands. It seems like kind of a useless superpower, you know? I don't know. Well, I mean, not on the 4th of July, but... You make a lot of people happy all the time, Moses. Uh, you should do it When like... have you ever cared about that? It's what I live for. <laughs> You can't laugh while I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it gives up the game. Yeah, it does. It does take away some of the credibility. So, still a three-on-three three here, and Cloud9 is hoping that they could, you know, find a little bit more. Dupree hiding in the back of the bomb site. He is out of grenades, and yeah, they've sort of spotted him out. That might have been his opportunity. I think once you let more people into that angle, it's not going to work out well. Not really the best communication, I think, for Astralis in this round, but um, bomb goes down. I don't know if they can easily retake this. Device is already a little bit low, low on health, and yeah, it's not really worth it. I agree. I fully agree. Now, See, they're... now you would need the fireworks if you had, you know, had them. Oh, yeah, sure. If they had firework hands, they'd, they'd be retaking this bombsite with ease. <laughs> um, I feel like, I, I mean, the fireworks could do some damage, right? Shoot them at people. Yeah, I guess, but yeah. I mean, you it, should do that. I guess it depends. <laughs> of course you did. What, like the Roman candles? Yeah. Used to do many weird things with, that people shouldn't do at home. What's the worst superpower you've ever seen in a comic or movie or TV show? I, d I don't really know. I don't really watch these things a lot. So I thought if I, I don't know much about it. Brand's powers are pretty useless. Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, but I haven't seen the new season, so I don't really know. I don't know what happens. But it does seem like he's messing around a lot in the world. <laughs> like he's really taking he's, a huge vacation yeah. for a long time. He's really, he's really toying with things. Yeah, it's out there. Off when, on his own. When are you going to catch up? Uh, I don't know. Pretty soon, I think. I'll, I'll Probably get it. should. Yeah. Especially after this conversation. It's fine. I don't I don't even care about spoilers. It doesn't actually bother me that much. Right. Everyone, that sort of tweet spoilers at Anders. Yeah, just do it. Go absolutely crazy. I will, I'll be fine. I can't remember things anyway, Moses. I'll, so, you know, we get to watch it. I've, I will have forgotten anyway. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have forgotten everything that occurred in the last season. Yeah. Device is on the angle. The Meg is gone the other side. Ooh. Oh my god, they, they got the one and Dupree picks up a headshot on Rush. He's been pretty good, Dupree, down here and he's going to get that kill too and that pretty much seals the deal. Automatic left and he's going to be going down. 16-11 in favor of Astralis who are already in the grand finals. So, yeah, Cloud9, I mean, it's hard to say, hard to make much out of this game. I think it was, you know, I think it was, it was fun to see Automatic play well once again. I like that. He had, some, he had some very cool rounds. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, this is always going to be the conversation around Cloud9 at the moment is, is with this team that they're trying to, like, put together and make work, it's eventually someone is going to have to consistently step up next automatic. He just dropped 28 kills in this. The next closest is Golden with 15. I, I tend to be on the side, and I, and I love the guy. I tend to be on the side. I, I really like what, what Sponge said the other day during a death segment, which is, where's Rush? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I love Rush. I think he was phenomenal in their major run. He was really underrated in his major run, but I haven't really seen him during this whole reformation process. Yeah, I agree. We need him back. That may yep. be the, the, what we look forward to next time. We're going to go to break, and then we will be back with more action.